This book belongs to you. Probably. Now, ah, do you think this is Henry? Henry Bob Bobolich, the boy in the story. Here we are. Henry Bob Bobolich, written by Juliet MacIver, illustrated by Link Choi. Henry Bob Bobolich, though he was small, could reach up to places unreached by the tall. For Henry could climb the most towering wall. And never, not ever, did Henry Bob fall. His great love of climbing, apparent to all, was clearly young Henry's vocational call. <laughs> Look at the smile on his face as he makes his way up the side here, as high as the birds. Was there nothing that brave Henry Bob couldn't climb? He astonished his schoolfellows time after time. Here they are, down here. And someone here, look, who's just as shocked. He scaled great cliffs made of granite or lime and dark, mossy crevices, slippery with slime. See him climbing up here, on a vine, and even over here. Up buildings, up trees, without reason or rhyme. And Henry was still seven years from his prime. Oh, and look, whoa, huh, his boots come off. It's fallen down here. And where's it gone? Oh. Bop. But one day, his teacher, out riding his steed, happened upon a most daredevil deed. By gum, there'll be no more of that, he decreed. I'm warning you, boy, and you'd better take heed, or it's off to the judge with the utmost of speed. And he told Henry's parents, who grimly agreed. Oh, he's in trouble. So Henry Bob Bobolich, horribly bound, was forced to remain with his feet on the ground. At first, he was furious, storming around, looking for objects to pummel and pound. And he has too, look. He's knocked that picture sideways, and he's broken the jug. And they're not happy. What's he doing over here? Oh, he's sad, all right. And then he slumped into sorrow with no further sound. And try as they might, no cure could be found. The light in his eyes was beginning to fade. He no longer spoke, nor smiled, nor played. They brought in the priest, who chanted and prayed. Physicians were called upon. Psychics were paid. They read palms and the psalms, applied balms they had made. But the case was called hopeless by all in the trade. So Henry Bob Bobolich, small from the start, grew smaller and smaller from sickness of heart. He is smaller too. He looks even smaller in that big bed, doesn't he? His dad's not happy about it. Till one day his father, inspecting his chart, said, get up, my son. It's time to depart. And the cook gave him apples and strawberry tart, and they set off at once in a small horse and cart. There they go. Oh, there's an apple falling off. And Henry has noticed it. Fresh air, said his father, a nice change of scene. 
We're off to far places we've never yet been. What marvels we'll see if your young eyes are keen. We may even see things that have never been seen. But Henry Bob Bobolich, listless and green, yearned only to climb up a cliff or ravine. They've gone to Egypt, see? The Sphinx. He's looking back at Henry. And the zebra and the lion. I think it's a lion. The trip isn't really working, is it? Henry's still sad. Though onward they went, through day and through night, no wonderful creature, no glorious sight, could raise Henry's spirits or lessen his plight. Look at the whale. Whoosh! And the boat's up there. And there on an elephant. Till the moment he spied by the bright morning light, tripping along in pursuit of a kite, a very small child at a very great height. She'll fall, he cried as he leapt from his chair and he raced to the cliff overhanging and bare, which he scaled with haste, but with infinite care. It looks like he's climbed down the elephant's trunk, off with his coat and up this amazing cliff here. While the mother came running, but shock and despair, the little girl toppled and fell through the air. But thank the high heavens, young Henry was there, hanging on by his fingernails, see? But he's got her. He caught her and brought her all curled in a ball to the arms of her mother who sobbed in her shawl. Just how had he done it? He held them in thrall. His paramount courage astonished them all. From that moment onwards, in every great hall, he was hailed as a hero for halting that fall. Look at all the people down here. They look like they've thrown him up in the air. Yay! And Henry Bob Bobolich, though he was small, went with his father to far off Nepal where he conquered the world's most difficult wall. But perhaps, more importantly, let us recall, he was free to pay heed to that innermost call. And this made young Henry most joyful of all. And he looks joyful, doesn't he? His bright eyes, and his thumb in the air. He's on top of the world. Oh, and he's still climbing. Ha, ah, even up the wallpaper. That's Henry Bob Bobolich.